Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make bagels. So bagels are a really fun and easy and delicious thing to make. So I'm going to go through the list of ingredients that you definitely need to make bagels and then I'll give you some optional ingredients to make them even more tastier. So you're going to need sugar. You can use white sugar or caster sugar or any other sugar that you've got, preferably just white normal sugar. Just plain white flour, salt, and yeast, okay? So you need these four ingredients to make your bagels today. Optionally, if you have an egg or a can of oil spray, we can use that as well, but you don't need this. Okay, so we've got our ingredients. Now let's talk about some of the materials that you'll need to make your bagels. You're going to need one mixing bowl, one saucepan for boiling your bagels. The bigger, the better, so you can fit more and it will be quicker. A cooling rack to cool your bagels once they're finished cooking. If you don't have a cooling rack, you can just take out one of the oven trays from your oven and use that before you start cooking them. An oven tray lined with baking paper. If you don't have any baking paper, you can just grease up your clean tray with some oil or butter. I'm very lucky to have this bench scraper here to divide my bagels into individual pieces, but you can just use a chopping board and a knife to do that, or you can just tear them apart. So this isn't completely necessary. I have a pair of scales here to weigh all of my ingredients. If you don't have a pair of scales, you can use measuring cups or spoons to help you measure your ingredients. And also a, something with long reach, like a spoon that can withstand the heat of boiling water and long enough so your fingers aren't in danger of getting burnt. Now students, one of the most important things we need to do is to wash our hands. And this is so no dirt or bacteria gets into the lovely bagels that we're going to be baking. Okay. So step one, you're going to put 500 grams of your plain flour into your mixing bowl. So we're going to put our mixing bowl onto our scales. We're going to press the on button. Wait till that hits zero. And we're going to pour our flour in until we see 500 on the scale. Perfect. Next, we're going to set our scale back to zero by clicking the on or tear button again. And we're going to clean our surface of our scale so it's nice and clean and then pour on 10 grams of yeast. We're then going to pour our yeast into the bowl with the flour. And we're just going to make sure we're going to brush off that yeast that's stuck on in there as well. Next, I'm going to reset it back to zero and using a spoon, I'm going to get some of this sugar out and put 23 grams on the scale and weigh 23 grams of sugar. Okay, and I'm going to pour that also in with my bowl of flour and yeast. And we have one more dry ingredient left, which is the salt. So I'm just going to pour six grams of salt onto my scales. Oh, and I've gone over, so I'm just going to pinch some. There we go. Take some out and pour that into the... Now we have our bowl of dry ingredients with our flour, our yeast, our salt and our sugar. And I should have mentioned this at the start, but we're going to use a whisk to whisk it all together so it's really incorporated and it's all spread out. You can use a fork if you don't have a whisk. My whisk is missing a handle, so I have to whisk it by the end of it like this. So one of our last ingredients is water. And what I've done is put the scales in the sink. I've turned them on with a jug on top. And I'm just going to turn my tap on and let it drip down into the jug. And then I'm going to pour my jug into our mixture here. So I'm going to turn the tap on, just have it on cold and let it drip. 
water and pour it into our mixture. And I'm dripping some, which I didn't mean to do. Just make sure you get it all in there like that. Okay. Now comes the fun part. We've got our dry ingredients in here, also with our water. So it's time to mix it. I'd really like you to try and just use your hands to get into the spirit of baking. Just make sure your hands are clean because we are going to be touching what you are going to be eating now, okay? So I'm gonna dip my hands in and I'm just going to get all of the dry incorporated with all of the wet until it becomes a shaggy dough. You can notice already that it's all stuck to my fingertips. I've still got it all in my one hand and I'm going to show you how to get the dough off. So you can actually make a little circle here with your fingers and then putting around each finger that's got a lot of dough on it, you can just sort of slide and scoop it off and then flick it back down just like that and that'll get the dough off your fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna use both hands now that I've got both of my hands free like this and I'm just going to scoop. So if you can see here, I'm scooping the dry and then pressing down to make sure it all gets mixed up. Okay, we're going to want to do this for quite a while um, until it gets into a nice dough. So I'm just going to keep doing this and then I'll show you the end result of what it should look like um, once it's been mixed in well. well. And I'm just going to keep trying to get it off my fingers so the dough on my fingers gets mixed too. But it's going to get messy. And you'll notice here it's starting to come together in a little dough ball. I want to try and get all the dryness out of it so it's nice and smooth. So what I'm doing is I am pressing and then sort of just rotating it around, turning it up and then pressing it down gently again like that. Okay. You'll start to notice now, the dough has turned into a, a sticky kind of dough. There's no little dry bits of flour on there anymore and I can pick it up and kind of throw it around like this. When I look in the bowl, there's no little bits of dry flour there anymore. And when those little bits of dry flour are gone, you then want to take it out and start kneading it on a flat work surface like what I have here. And this will give you more room to be able to knead it without having the bowl kind of bouncing up and down. You want to keep kneading this until it's really silky smooth. If you need to put some flour down on your work surface, if it gets too sticky, you can do that. So I'm going to do that now. Just a little sprinkle so it doesn't stick to the bench. And I'm going to show you how to knead it now on the bench. So I'm going to put it on the ground here, on the ground, on the bench. I don't want it on the ground. And I'm just going to press it down and then pull it up over itself, press it down, almost like a rolling pin. And I'm just going to keep lightly pressing it down like this. You don't want to smash it down as hard as you can because you'll actually tear some of the gluten strands that we've, that we've created. So we just want to do a really kind of light but firm down, over, down, over and we just want to keep rolling it and then giving it a flip, rolling it, giving it a flip, rolling it. And we just want to keep doing this. It'll take a while. We can use both hands. We want to keep doing this until we get a nice smooth dough for our bagels. Now you might be asking, why are we kneading this dough? Why do we have to keep doing this when it's already mixed together? The reason why we're kneading the dough is to create what's called gluten. Now when gluten forms, it gets really tight and gives a lot of structure to whatever dough you're eating. So when you have bread and you open up the bread and it kind of tears apart, they're the little bits of gluten that are coming apart.
So here's our ball now. It's looking pretty smooth, isn't it? We've got some slight bumps here that we can kind of see. So we're just going to leave it for two minutes and let the gluten relax, like I, what I was talking about before. And then after about two to five minutes, we're going to come back and give it one more knead before letting it rise. Now it's only been three minutes, but notice how it's already risen a little bit. And that's because of the yeast. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to quickly pour a little tiny bit of dusting flour over the top. And I'm going to give it one last knead and just see how smooth that was when I pressed it down because the gluten's relaxed and we don't need to press down hard. We might just give it a few little turns and pushes and prods and now it's ready to be created into a little ball. So your mission now is to get this dough, this beautiful silky, look at how smooth that is, the silky smooth dough into a nice tight ball. Okay. So we can do a few ways of this. We can kind of stretch it out like this, and then we can just kind of roll it up like that. And then kind of push the sides together in like this. We can rotate it, turn, and then pull it against the bench like that. Then rotate it, and then pull it against the bench like that. Rotate it, and then pull it against the bench like that. Okay, and it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to put it back into our bowl. Now that it's got some tension, it's nice and smooth, beautiful dough ball. I'm just going to plop it in there. We're going to put some glad wrap over this. Now I'm going to set a timer on our iPad or phone or whatever we've got for about one hour. And what's going to happen is this dough, when you take the tea towel off, it's going to double in size. It's going to be this big, great balloon of a dough ball. So you might be thinking, why does it turn into such a huge dough ball? That's because of the yeast that we put into it. So what this yeast does, if you have a look at yeast, you can sort of see it's like these little um, brown sort of pellets. And what it does is it eats up all the sugar that's found in the flour and also the sugar that we put in uh, to the dough as well. And when it eats that sugar, it then expels carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide rises. And so that makes our dough rise. And by making our dough rise once without being cooked, it develops a lot of flavor and structure. Okay, so it's been one hour. Let's reveal our dough. Wow, and we can see how much it's risen and we can see all those little bubbles that have risen in the dough because of the carbon dioxide that's been released. So what we're going to do now is actually turn our dough ball over onto our work surface, like this. There we go. And we're just gonna scoop out some of that in there as well. Okay, so now we have our beautiful, supple, airy, risen dough. Now what we actually want to do is we want to punch it down like this and get all that air out. We can just press it lightly if we want to. We don't have to punch it down so aggressively. But we now want to split this into eight even pieces and this is going to give us eight bagels. So all my bagels cook evenly. So I'm going to divide my total piece of dough into eight pieces. If you can't be bothered doing that, that's okay and you just want to divide it by feel, you can do that. But I'm going to put this piece of dough onto my scales and I'm going to divide. So now I'm going to use my bench scraper and I'm just going to cut like this. Make sure if you are using a knife, you use a chopping board so you don't cut um, your bench. Okay, so I'm just dividing these into what I think will be eight and then I'll measure them on the scales. So now comes the fun part. So what I want you to do now when you've got your bagels into little pieces like this, I want you to put them on the table and then flatten them out. Nice and flat so we get all the air out of them. So they look like a bit of a pancake. Then I want you to take each of the corners and lightly stretch them and then fold them in the middle like this. It feels a little bit like Play-Doh. And you're folding them into the middle and then put the flat side on, on the bench top 
and then slowly just pull it all together and then squeeze the very top like that. So it's in a nice, neat little ball. Once it's like this, I want you to then put the ball side on the bench, put your hand over it, and then just give it a little roll against the bench like this. You can use two hands and just roll it like that. So it forms a nice little circle. But test yourself and see if you can do it with your one hand and just lightly roll it around like this. Now once you've got them into tight little balls, you can then pick them up and then transfer them to your baking sheet. Now that we have our lovely circular bagel balls, we're just going to lightly cover the tops of them just with a little bit of flour because we're going to need to cover them to rise one last time before we cook them. This time only for 10 minutes, but we need them to rise a little bit so we can stick our fingers in them and make the holes for our bagels. Now while we're waiting for our bagels to rise the second time, we're going to boil our water and turn our oven on. You're going to put your oven onto fan forced if it has that setting. If it doesn't, you can put it onto convection. And we're going to put our oven to 200 degrees. And here we're boiling our water. It's really important that you get someone a bit older to help you do this, because it can get out of control if you're not monitoring it. Bagels are sometimes really nice with different types of seeds. I'm not going to put any seeds in mine because I like them plain, but if you've got any sesame seeds or poppy seeds or some other spices that you would like to put onto your bagels, you can do that as we're cooking them. Okay, so now that we've let our bagels rest for 10 minutes, we have to do two things to them. We have to make the hole in the middle of the bagel. We then have to boil them with our boiling water here, and then we're going to put them in the oven. So come over here and I'll show you how to shape them. So we're going to pick our bagel up like this. We're then going to get our index finger and our thumb and we're going to push really hard in the middle, just like this. Be careful that you don't squeeze the end of it there. So now if we rub our fingers, our finger and our thumb together like this, and then we get our other hand and gently pull, we can see we've created like a little donut hole. We're then going to get our two index fingers and try and snug both of them in there like that and then gently twist around and around and around and around like this until it stretches it out a little bit more. And now we have around a three centimeter hole in the middle and that's what we're after. And it's ready to be put into the boiling water. So we're gonna grab our spoon, put it on our spoon here, making sure we've got someone to help us. Now we want to put it in the water for a minute on each side. So I'm going to put it in the boiling water, count to 60, and then I'll flip it over, count to 60, then I'm going to take it out and put it back onto my baking tray ready to bake. Here we go. That's been 60 seconds on one side, so I'm just going to now flip it over. Make sure if you're flipping it, you flip it away from you, so if the water splashes, it'll go against the backsplash of your wall, not hitting you directly in the face. And that's been a minute on that side, so I'm going to just scoop out my bagel now with my big spoon. Make sure I'm not carrying all that water with me, so I'm draining it a little bit, and I'm going to transfer it back over to my baking sheet, ready to bake. Now, if you've got any spices or seeds, this is the time to add them. And I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of oil so it has that nice golden shine when it comes out of the oven. And I'm just going to repeat those steps with the rest of my bagels. Now, you might be wondering, why are we boiling the bagels? Why don't we just put them in the oven? Well, boiling the bagels makes it have a really nice chew. And that's how traditionally bagels are made. They have a really nice chew to them when you bite into them. The longer you boil them for, the, long, the harder and more chewier they'll be. So if you want them to be really chewy, you can boil them for all the way up to two minutes each side. Now remember that egg that I was talking about. Sometimes you can put what's called egg wash on your bagels. This is where you mix one egg with a dash of water and you mix it together with a fork. And then using a brush like this, you can lightly 
brush the bagel with some egg wash before you put it in the oven. Okay, so all of my bagels have now been boiled and I've turned my boiling water off. I'm now going to open the oven and put them in the oven. Now I've forgotten to put the top tray in the oven, so they're gonna to have to sit on the bottom tray, but usually you'd put them on the top tray. Now, just be very careful, usually you'd use oven mitts for this. So make sure you're using oven mitts. Um, and you want to put them in here for between 18 and 22 minutes. Keep an eye on them though, because they might burn. Okay, it's just hit 20 minutes. Let's have a look at our bagels. Oh, a bit smoky. Just be careful when you open the oven because it will be very hot. Mmm, delicious. Now we can just transfer these over to the cooling rack using a pair of tongs. They look fantastic. Now you just need to let them cool for five to 10 minutes, um, but they are great just after they've come out of the oven. So make sure you give it a try about 10 minutes after they've just come out. Let's taste. Mm -mm. I hope you like the video grade sixes. Just remember that it takes a lot of practice to do baking. So if it doesn't work the first time, that's okay. Don't give up and keep trying. I hope you enjoy and your family enjoys your beautiful fresh bagels.